Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Total Turf Experience Indoor and Outdoor Sports Complex. It's time, once again, for the Next Levels, Next Level Grades Football Club Radio Show with your host, Preston Brown. Filling in for Preston Brown, we have Marcus Hammond. Hey, Marcus, what's going on, buddy? What's going on, Joe? How are you making up? All right. And today's guest, we got Troy Shorts from Woodbury High School and Sterling Sheffield from Clearview slash Paul Six. Can I say that? No. 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 All right. All right. Ooh, I slipped. Sorry. All right, let's, uh, first up. First, we have with us Sterling Sheffield. Sterling. Tell us who you are, man. What's going on? Uh. Yeah, play, I play uh, I play outside linebacker. Uh, play actually a whole bunch of different positions for uh, Clearview, but I'm mainly getting recruited for uh, outside linebacker. So how did you get interested in this anyway? It first started uh, this guy Chris Inge when I was like four years old. Uh, my dad took me to, uh, he was on, he was my neighbor, he took me to uh, one of his games and uh, he yeah. just, like I just fell in love with it and my dad played football growing up so it was, it was good, you know, getting used to it and all so. Alright, so give us uh, some background info on you know, what you've achieved so far, where you currently stand in the process and what you look to achieve uh, the final year you have eligibility. Yeah, uh, I achieved pretty much a good amount of stuff, uh, achievements. I, when I was uh, younger, I played uh, midget, midgets with uh, Troy, played against Troy and we were rival rivalries the whole entire time growing up. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot. It's been now with the recruiting process, it's like, it's, di it's different uh, getting uh, used to it used to all the games that some people play but it doesn't matter honestly I'm just trying to get used to uh, uh, just get just get a scholarship and go to college honestly all right uh, yeah I'll ask a question so I'm sorry not um, sorry for Paul. Uh, what about the school is the recruiting process as hectic as they say it is yes yes it is well especially for uh, for me, because I'm not six foot five, I'm not. Uh, I don't run a four three, four two forty. So it's a lot different for me. It's more like me as average Joe trying to get throughout, get through everything that I have to do. Uh, me going all the way to West Virginia, up to Buffalo, to Pittsburgh, to Rutgers, and all that. It's it's like it's been a, it's been a lot, and so it's it's been a lot, very hectic on my family. Trying to get make make sure that uh, they know everything and know that I'm uh, how how I have to be eligible and all that. So yeah, it's been a lot. Okay. Uh, recently, you were listed as one of the top 20 players in the state by Scout.com. So back then, I was a scout. How did you end up with that ranking? And what's your thoughts on it? <laughs> hey, Preston. Um, it, when I when I heard about it, I was Relieved, honestly. Honestly, I was relieved. I, I thought that uh, I, w I wanted to be better, but you know, you always want to be better as an athlete. But uh, getting that top 20 and the nine, uh, rank 19, it just made me want to work harder to be number one in South Jersey instead of just being number 19. Absolutely, absolutely. So you just mentioned college. When it comes down to it, what, what weighs the most? with regards to you making a decision on whether you'd like to go to college. Let's say every school in America offers you a scholarship right now. How would you narrow down you know, what you want to major in, what you want to stay close to home, off and home, all that kind of stuff? Honestly, um, their academics, their, uh, and yeah, like how close is the home. My, uh, with, with me gr growing up with a stable family, it's a lot, it's a lot easier for me to, uh, do some stuff that certain people were not, weren't able to do, like Preston, with, uh, with his background. But uh, overall, I, honestly, like I said before, if I get an offer, I'm take. Uh, I'll be, I'll be glad. I'll be happy. All right, 
I'm if I'm 20 cars right now, we all have them today. How are you gonna make it? Safe? Um, the, rela the relationships I have with the coaches. Uh, also, uh, if I can see myself go in there. Now, with us, with regards to training, I know you, you, you excel at many different positions. Do you have a preference of what you like to play in college? Honestly, like I, like I've said three times already, <laughs> I, if I get a scholarship for any for a position, it doesn't matter. I'll take it, honestly. I uh, I don't really have a a short like a thing like a position that I want to play, but I I don't care. I just just being on the college level would be fine with me. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to change the to uh, topic real quick. Excuse me. How do you think teammates should handle bullying in the locker room, like the situation down in Miami right now? Do you think it should stay in the locker room? Do you think it should be exposed like it was? Bullying? Yes, sir. Um. Well, bullying is a the ter term of life. You you experience bullying throughout your life. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like you you'll get you'll get bullied at a at anywhere you go. It could be at church. It could be it it could be anywhere. The way the way you respond to it is to not worry about them and just just know that. It was gonna. Um. Uh, the me with the uh, bullying. You just you just gotta handle it as a man, honestly. You can't you can't have something. Uh. Make uh make you depressed like it did with Jonathan Martin. You just have, you just gotta you just gotta worry about your own self and just do what you gotta do. That's a fair response. Um, so we'll talk about that. Now we're going to talk about concussions. Have you ever yourself had a concussion? No, I haven't had it. Well, I've had one, but they I was just light, lightheaded for a little bit during the game, so they just took me out for the rest of the game. It was the uh, Eastern game. But other than that, I haven't experienced any of that. I, I try my best on, on the field to to use the proper uh, tackling techniques. If something were to happen to my head or anything like that, that's... That's not me trying to make it happen. That's just like God telling uh, telling me, maybe maybe you gotta cut it out for a little bit. All right. Do you think the NFL handles concussions the proper way? Yes, honestly, I think they're a little bit too too cautious about concussions. Football football is hit hit each other. You you work work your anger on somebody else instead of uh, trying to like you know you have to protect yourself, but you can't be protected too much to where. You're ba you're basically not able to basically touch the touch the, touch the person. Like um, when when you're coming across the middle, you catch the uh, receiver catches the ball and the free safety lays him out. Yeah, he, if, even if he uses his head, most of the times like he doesn't use his head. But from the camp from the camera angle and all that, it looks like that he's uh that he's using his head. So I I think they're a little bit too too uh, protective about it. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. But, yeah. but still, like, if you're playing, if you didn't want to get your head, if you didn't want to get hurt with your head, then you shouldn't be playing football. Uh, a couple more questions before we finish up with you. Uh, you, you came on board with us last year, seven on seven. Continue to train in seven six. Uh, Without being such a new program. What do you feel gives us an edge to the point where you, you continue to train with us and you feel like it's more advantageous for you to train with us as opposed to one of the bigger name companies and not one of the bigger companies? Well, the thing, the thing I lo love about this is that you guys are going to keep growing. You guys are going to, uh, yeah, you're very smart and you know that the, the ways to get recruited and the, the only thing that this program can, uh, can go is uh, uh, go forward and be positive. There's nothing negative about this program and I, I just love it. One, it, it's close to home, basically right around the corner, but two, like, 
it's a it's a very uh, you have a lot of great players come uh, coming through this program, and like I said, this program will only get better. Sounds good. Well, before we go, is there anything else you know, we got? Coaches might be listening. You know, anyone in the world might be listening right now. Is there anything else you want them to know about Sterling Shepard? Uh, I'm a hardworking uh, person. I I never let anybody out compete me, and I just I just want to be the best I can be, and um, uh, never hit a ceiling with my potential. Sounds good, man. Well, thank you for joining us. Right, thank you. Right. Ready for this workout coming up? Yep. Uh, don't take a quick break. We're going to short shorts. Sports Radio 103 WTSL. You've been listening to the Virtua Total Turf Experience Radio Network Total Sports Live. Sports Radio 103 WTSL. Live from the Total Turf Experience Indoor and Outdoor Sports Complex, it's Next Level Grades Football Club Radio with your host Preston Brown, his guest, Troy Shorts of Woodbury High School. Hey, hi, everybody. This is Preston Brown. Just a little background about myself. I'm from Cameron, New Jersey. I on the state football high school championship team at Woodrow Wilson. I went off to Tulane University, played wide receiver, and now I'm here training guys, primarily focusing on speed training and also any kind of offensive uh, sports specific training. I'm here with uh, Troy Shorts. Uh, how's everything going today, Troy? Everything's going good. All right, great, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Troy. Um, I play for Woodbury High School. I'm a running back and cornerback, and I'm a, uh, I'm a junior. Okay, if you could get one message out there for all the college coaches that about who you really are, what you want to accomplish, what would you have there, what would you say to them? Um, I would say that um, I want to accomplish, I want, I want to go to the NFL and play football. And I want to continue to, um, I want to continue to play football to, at the next level. Okay. Now, tell us one thing that would set you apart from other guys who are competing for scholarships, such as yourself, not only in state of New Jersey, but throughout the rest of this region. Um, I have heart. A lot of people, a lot of kids, they got speed and talent and size, but they have, have no heart. And a lot of these, like, recruiting websites, they don't see that. They can't measure heart. So. Okay, um, tell us about uh, some of your um, interests so far in uh, college choices. Um, I'm, I'm receiving interest from uh, Rutgers, Temple, Pitt, West Virginia, and Penn State. Okay, and uh, if you had a clear favorite, uh, what would you say that would be at this time? You don't have to answer that. You know, just yeah, you don't have to answer. My favorite is uh, Penn State. That's my that's my favorite college is Penn State. Uh, my dad and my grandma went there, so okay. I'm, I'm comfortable there. Happy Valley, it is. Uh, your yeah. legacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, man. That's great. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, what you've been doing this off season and how you plan to uh, further your goal or further put progress and uh, work towards your goals this year. Well, I've been working on my speed and my endurance. So not only just having speed on one rep, but having speed on multiple reps and so I can be strong in the fourth quarter during my uh, next season. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, if there's a guy on the next level, either college or pro, uh, that you closely resemble, who would that person be? And um, why? 
I think I resemble um, Adrian Peterson because <laughs> he got power and speed. So get my speed up, and I already got power power game. So. Next level, are you being closely more recruited for offense or defense? Uh, I'm getting more recruited for offense, but as I'm working on cornerback more, I think I'm getting more interest at cornerback too. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, what position? What position would you want to play in college? Does it not matter? Do you have a preference? My favorite position is running back, but I, I, it doesn't really matter to me. I, I play both sides if I have to. Is the recruiting process hectic for you as well, or is it more? It's not. Back? It's not really hectic yet. I, I, I guess the spring and summer is going to get hectic though, because I'm going to be coming closer to my senior year and having to make a decision. Um, let me ask you a question. This is kind of, uh, you know, related to uh, what's going on in the sports world today. Uh, as you know. Um, you know, every time you turn on the television, ESPN, there's always some kind of athlete at some point in time involving, them, involving themselves uh, in negative things of some sort. How have you been able to avoid those things? And what would be your advice for younger people to, uh, you know, to avoid such uh, situations? As those? Just to stay focused on, on your goal. And my dad always tells me to stay focused. And stay focused, stay focused. And he tells me all the time, but... but as he tells me, I'm listening because I'm still saying focus on my grades in school and just working out, getting ready for football, football season. Okay, now, do, you, do you participate in any other sports besides football? I play basketball, but I didn't play basketball this year, but I'm, I'm running track this spring. Okay, that's great. Uh, just to piggyback on that, uh, you know, a lot of, I'm from Camden, so a lot of kids that I know that I grew up high school with, uh, they had the same opportunities that I had athletically. Some were even better athletes than I was coming up. However, they subjected themselves to situations which uh, didn't allow them to pursue, uh, you know, football on a higher level, just because you know they put themselves in. You know, either didn't take care of their grades and not taking care of your grades, uh, you know, keeps you from performing on the football field. You can't perform on the football field, and you, you know, you start using that time that you used to play football with to do other things. Yeah. Uh, I went to college with guys that got in trouble, uh, and sometimes it's a domino effect. Uh, I mean, that's great. You know, you, you know, I met your father. Your father's, you know, does a wonderful job with you. If, you're, if there's people out there like me who didn't have a father at home, you know, then you have to confide in other, you know, men in your life or women that you can, uh, you know, really have your best interests at heart. So uh, that's my message out there to any, anybody that's, you know, coming up and wants to do the right thing. That, uh, temptation is out there where you do a lot of negative things, but, you know, continue to push forward and stay focused on, on your goals at, at, at task. So uh, you can continue to uh, be the best person that you possibly be. Uh, how have you handled this issue with upcoming high school athletes about performance enhancing drugs and whatnot? Uh, I think it's wrong because you're not you're not playing fair, and you, you're basically you're cheating. You're cheating. You're cheating yourself, really, because you when you get what you what you want when you get a scholarship or whatever you're trying to get from them drugs, then you didn't work for anything that you got. You just used drugs. Uh, how do you feel about concussions? Uh, I, well, I've never had a concussion myself, but but football is, is really physical, and it's going it's going to happen no matter what type of helmet you have or or what you do. It's going to it's going to happen because it's a physical game. Yeah, man. With that uh, with, with that concussion thing, I, I know a lot of. Uh, Parents have a, a high concern about that, especially on the uh, on the midget level. So you know, a lot of people they kind of put their kids in sports later when it comes to uh, football, especially because it's you know, a lot of contact. Um, I personally never had a concussion. I didn't start playing football uh, with, with equipment on until I was 12. Uh, you know, my older brother played at University of North Carolina. He played in Canada. And for the fill up his soul, and he had a, he had a few concussions, so we would have discussions. However, uh, but, you know, for the love of the game, you, know, you continue to do it. 
unless it becomes something that uh, you know, is really haphazard to, to your future and can really hinder you. But if you play the game in fear that you may get hurt or concuss the likelihood that those things will happen is, will probably increase, in my opinion. So, you know, my, my advice is, you know, you have the equipment on, technology's getting a lot better, so to the parent out there that's nervous about putting your kid out there, I mean, the concern is, you know, a concern because, you know, concussions happen probably every day somewhere around the country. Not only in football, but there's other sports where there's contact, like hockey, and, you know, I know people who got concussions playing basketball. Soccer. Soccer. Know, so, field hockey, lacrosse. So, I mean, it, it's something of concern, but again, I think there's enough precautions that are happening and a lot of awareness that's going on that the measures for concussions have gotten a lot better. So, that would be my advice is just, uh, you know, kind of educate yourself a little bit just to, you know, catch some of the warning signs. But, you know, the kid, you want to put your kid in football, but I, I don't think you should put them in there with, to be worrisome. And, and just to piggyback on the performance enhancing, I mean, there, there are some things out there that's legit in, in, in reference to like protein or you know other kind of supplements that are natural. But then you know there are a lot of people out there you know taking advantage of illegal products. And my thing with that is eventually, like it will always show. It will always show up. Um, you know, so you know the guy that uh, you know takes the performance enhancers, like eventually, they may never catch that part of it, but something will happen. You know, it may it may sustain an injury that forces them to, to quit playing football. I just think that when, when you cheat yourself and you cheat the sport, like so, something will happen. Like somebody will come up, something will come out of it that you know you think. I guess you're taking advantage of getting away with something that's illegal. It'll eventually like. Come to the floor for some kind of yeah. uh, Now we don't want this to happen to you, but if you got hurt, what would you do after football? Do you have anything you'd like to do? Anything you're interested in? Uh, well, that's my. That's why my parents mainly focus on my education, because that's the most important. And if you don't have the education, and you get hurt, then you can't do anything. But, but I would. I want to like take over my dad. My dad's own business. And I want to take over his business. He's a um, financial planner, so I want to take over uh, his business if I got hurt. Yeah, man, financial planner—that's a wonderful career. I'm actually in the same field myself, so uh, I mean, you know, good luck with all that. And again, who's to say that you still can't do those type of things while you're, you know, playing football? You're fortunate enough to, you know, play at the highest level. Uh, again, you have a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those guys have a lot of free time. They, they definitely engage in a lot of business deals, a lot of endorsements, you know, a lot of traveling. So, I mean, you can still pursue some of those things. The financial planning world, you know, allows you the freedom to make your own schedule and do those type of deals. So, uh, I mean, it's something you should definitely look into, especially because your father's been in the business for, you know, longer than you've been alive. <laughs> You know, probably as long as I've been alive, but uh, just another little piggyback about next level breaks. Uh, I'm pretty sure my partner Marcus has spoke on this, you know, in prior episodes. However, it's something that came apart. Like I started Great New Sports Academy in 2011, just to give kids a competitive edge uh, in football for the most part. Uh, I started just trying to reach back to the community in Camden, uh, give people you know top-notch training. And, and just teach them, you know, add a, a mentoring component in it because even for kids who have father figures in their lives like Troy, uh, they still need an outside voice, somebody who's actually been through what they're going through, somebody who, who knows the pain, who, who understands that, uh, you know, th this physical game that we're going through. Uh, you know, we just need an outside voice sometimes. So in, in that regard, uh, it allowed me to, you know, continue to work forward. And then a year or so ago, Marcus had reached out to me and said he wanted to start a 7-on-7 football program. And it was something that I was interested in before. I just didn't have the time uh, to do it personally all by myself. So uh, me and Marcus, you know, we went through the growing pains together. Uh, you know, we put it together. And the reason, the way we came up with the name was we took 
the first part of Next Level Quarterbacks, which he runs, and I had great new sports academy, and then we just combined it. So, uh, and Troy was one of the people who, uh, one of the players that got on board when we first started. Uh, he's been here ever since. Uh, he takes his hand to come to training with us three days a week. And he's definitely improving. So I, I would say that uh, sometime this spring, uh, Troy would probably be receiving his first offer from who? I don't know, but uh, he'll definitely hit the, hit the scene this year. And uh, to, to others, it'll be a surprise, but because I see him every week all the time and I know the work that he's put in, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a surprise at all to me. Who do you, besides Penn State, is there another school you're favoriting right now which, that you're leaning more towards? Um, no, not really. Um, I'm just looking at all the t all different schools and seeing how I fit, like in their program. All right. Um, again, you know, Troy. Uh, if, uh, what are some of your goals that you've set for yourself for this season? Uh, are you trying to like win the championship this year? I understand you guys played in the playoff game last year. And yeah, I lost two to nothing. Two to nothing. Yeah. It's Penn State. Yeah, I saw that. So you know, um, you know, what are your plans for this year? You know, being though know, it's your last year, high school football. You know, what, what goals have you set for this year? Well, the number one goal is to win the championship, and get the run, and play in, de in December. Um, but I want to have a um, a breakout season, my senior year. I want to have a great season. And I'm, I'm looking to have a great season because all the work I've been putting in with, with you and Coach Marcus and our 7 on 7 team. Now, if you, could, if you could put measurables on that breakout season, like what kind of numbers are you looking to put up from an offensive standpoint? Um, like 2,000 yards rushing, uh, 25 touchdowns, stuff like that. Yeah, that, that would be, that yeah, be an that awesome would be season. Pretty <laughs> I don't know if my memory serves me correct or not. Someone could probably watch this and correct me, but I want to say the last 2,000 yard rusher we had in South Jersey might have been Albert Young from Morristown, who graduated the same year I did and went to the University of Iowa, played for the Minnesota Vikings. So you might want to check that. Uh, you probably could call one of the uh, Courier Post guys for that statistic. But uh, I mean, just think about it this way. If you play 12 games this year, which means you would have to go to the championship and average about 200 yards a game, then you can, you can uh, you know, far surpass that goal. So uh, if you set those goals in mind that way and break down the numbers, you probably have a great chance of uh, achieving that. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a blessing being around, you know, working with Next Level Grace, being here at Total Turf. Working on guys like Troy, there's a few other guys who came from Woodbury a few times to come and train with us. Our training is rigorous, uh, and it's rigorous from a standpoint that uh, it's going to get you, you know, far surpass anything that you want to accomplish. Right? Uh, first, you have to mentally put your mind into it. That's the first part that we uh, instill in kids, and, and secondly, you know, you have to just be consistent, continue to work hard. So my advice to people out there that are watching this segment, you know, I want you guys to know that our motto is, you know, to be better than good and be more consistent than complacent. And we're not asking for you to be perfect because no one is. However, but that work, that constant, consistent work toward perfection is, uh, is something that we that we instill, that we thrive. So, I mean, it's bigger than just training, you know, because this is like a, an extension of family here. Uh, you know, we really work hard, we really take it serious. And so, uh, you know, I, I'll say in the, in the near future, we'll start filming some of our sessions of training, and uh, we'll, we'll let you guys take a look and see exactly what it is that we do. Uh, yeah, we definitely look forward to continue working, working hard here. You know, the winter's coming to a close soon. I'm so glad because, you know, the snow has, uh, you know, really, really been putting a hurting on us. So, you know, we're looking for a great spring. We got our tryouts coming up March 9th. And for the 7 on 7, we got over 100 people registered currently. So, uh, we're just really looking forward to hit the spring circuit this year and really grind. And our goal is that every kid within our organization gets a free scholarship to college. 
you know, based off the input that they put into it uh, and not off of us. Totally based off the hard work that they put on and the display that the coaches see in the, on the field after that. You got any closing remarks, Troy? Uh, no. Nah. Yeah, let, let us know something. Let us tell it. Tell us something, man. Uh, you know, close out. Don't just you know. Let the people uh, understand something about Troy Shorts. I'm just looking to have a, a big senior season this year. Just be on the lookout. Yeah, we will. Okay. See you on TV soon. Absolutely. Again, man, I'm Preston Brown. Uh, next level greats. Uh, over here at Total Turf, our home. And I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in today. I look forward for uh, all the going on second. All right, well, here you had it with Preston Brown and both recruit Troy Shorts. We'll see you guys next week here on Next Level Rage Football. It's hump day. Woo -woo! Ronnie, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? I'd say happier than a camel on Wednesday. Hump day! Get happy. Yeah! Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Uh-oh. Guess what day it is. Guess what day it is. Huh? Anybody? Julie. Hey, guess what day it is.